Welcome to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Hello and welcome back to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. I'm Brie Gabrielle and next to me is the one and only Captain Rick Murphy. Hi Rick. Hi Brie. <laughs> this week in conjunction with Shark Week coming up and only the best week of the year, we're talking all about our friendly giants of the sea, sharks. But before we go any deeper, Rick, let's say hi to Dave at the workbench. Dave, you got some tips for us when it comes to catching some sharks? Yeah, we're gonna have to do a lot of wire things tonight. Show you wire. how to do some wire stuff. Get wired. Build your own wire leaders. All right, well, Rick, what can we expect when it comes to fishing for sharks? You know, Bree, we're gonna take a look at the, the uh, pictures from this week's contest, saltwater sportsman pictures. And we have bull sharks <clears throat> as well as we've got lemon sharks. And you know, one of my favorite things, Bree, about mm -hmm. shark fishing is how powerful sharks really are. And whether they're Caribbean reef sharks, black tips, the one thing that's really cool is how they jump, how they bite the boat when you get them beside the boat. Mm -hmm. I just really love everything about sharks, especially Me great too. great fish to learn how to fly fish There's, with. Yeah, really? What you got? I don't know, I, I have a big shark. <laughs> okay, do. I do. Let's begin <laughs> in the Northwest region tonight with Captain Jeff Hageman, who has a few things to tell you when it comes to fishing for some good old sharks. Hey, Hag. How you doing? Pretty good. We've got plenty of sharks, all sizes, inshore, offshore, um, black tips, sharp nose, bulls, hammerheads, makos, tigers, bonnet heads, inshore, black tips, spinners. We've got a lot of the sharks in, the, in Florida we've got right here. Uh, you want to pick your tackle and how you're going to go after what size shark you're going to go after. That's how you want to match your tackle. Inshore sharks, and they're going to get up to 40, 50 pounds unless you're fishing for bull sharks. So you're going to lighten up your tackle offshore, some of the bigger sharks, and around the beaches and passes. Fishing on the Skyway Bridge is a great place to go. Might want to beef up your tackle if you're fishing from shore. You want to have a little more line to hook in one of those big bull sharks or hammerheads. Chum, 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 and more chum. The more sight you put out there, the better off you're going to be. You're going to bring more sharks to the back of your boat. Offshore right now, we've got plenty of spinner sharks, black tips, sharp nose. Um, on the wrecks right now and anything from 70 feet of water on out. Inshore, black tips right now, we got a ton of them and we still got tarpon around, so we still got bulls and the hammerheads around. And there's a lot of them right now out on the beaches. But Skyway Bridge, if you don't have a boat, great place to go shark fishing. They're, they're out there doing it every day when I'm out there catching bait. They're still floating baits out, so great place to go. Remember to keep that extra long hook out with you so you can keep your fingers when you're shark fishing and uh, get that hook out safely. All right. Also, uh, Moving inshore, Captain Jason Leinberger of Ruthless Fishing Charters out of Tampa Bay reports a great smith bite right now. He's fishing the Whedon Island and Picnic Island areas. He's using live sardines and pinfish. Right now, either tide, the fish have been biting on, incoming or outgoing. Uh, fish are averaging anywhere from 24 to 34 inches. He's free lining and also using a float with about three feet of line underneath it and using 25 to 30 pounds of carbon meter and a VMC circle hook. So great snook bite right now in middle Tampa Bay. Uh, get out there and uh, catch some of those. Either tide right now working well. That outgoing seems to be producing for me a little bit better, but he's telling me either one up there. Moving offshore, good gag report right now. Throughout my entire region, I'm getting reports from anywhere from seven feet of water out up, out to 1.30 p.m. Also getting some reports inside of that, so you don't have to go quite that far. Touch sardines on the standard bottom rig. Uh, you want to start off with dead bait on the bottom before you fire down that live bait. You really want to get those fish fired up. Even drop a chum block right now because the water, we've got these major tides right now. Get these fish fired up. Drop a chum block down to the bottom. Get those fish going real good before you fire down those live baits. A lot of good gag truck now. A lot of legal fish and a lot of good, I've heard some good reports of some 12 and even up to 30 pound fish out there right now. Also, these big moons right now. Uh, the mangrove snapper right now seems to be everywhere, from inside the bay all the way out to 100 feet of water, over any kind of high-release structure, rock pile, reef or wreck, um, a shrimp or a sardine on a hookup jig is hard to beat for these guys. The lightest leader you can get away with, fish are ranging anywhere from 2 to 6 pounds, and bigger fish have been deeper. I uh, got a little trick that uh, I heard from a captain a few weeks ago. He's taking a 5-gallon bucket, drilling holes in it, and instead of putting his chum bag right off the back of the boat, which usually when you're offshore, your cooters and everything else, if you're on any kind of a structure, will come sit up underneath the boat. So your chum's going to have to drift back. He's putting his chum bag about 
50 feet off the back of the boat in a five-gallon bucket and then casting to it instead of having to drift baits back. So that's a nice little tip. It brings the fish up. They're not scared from the shadow of the boat and brings them up high or you can catch them easier. All right, great report from the Yeti Northwest Region Hag. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Drummond Community Bank hotspots from the Northwest Region inshore. Redfish throughout the region on the top of the tide use cut or live bait. And then offshore groupers, red groupers, gag groupers, and 70 plus feet of water over the ledges, rock piles, and live rock use pinfish for bait. Okay, Rick, let's keep the current moving and I go on. Down. You're so weird. Keep on moving over to the <laughs> southeast region where Captain Jimbo Thomas has the 411 on what's biting. That's correct. Hey, Rick. Hey, Bree. Hey, buddy. All right, well, you know, it seems like there's been a lot more sharks around than usual, especially bull sharks in the bays. There's been some big ones caught in the last few months in some of the marinas and the canals in Biscayne Bay, mostly around the fish cleaning tables where we're throwing the carcasses in. But that's really too easy catching those because they're trained in there. But if I was going to do some inshore shark fishing, I'd get anchored up along the edge of a channel, hang a bonita or barracuda slab off the back of the boat for chum, and then drift a slab of bait back in the current on a 20 to 30 pound outfit with a four to five foot piece of wire leader and a circle hook. Now a great place to do this is in the finger channel south of Key Biscayne. Nice thing about that is you can do it in just about any kind of weather. It's almost always calm in there. The main sharks that you're gonna see inshore are bulls, lemons, and black tips, but it's not uncommon for a big hammerhead or even a tiger shark to be in shallow water. And then offshore, bonita and barracuda are also the bait of choice. You want to fish anywhere from 100 feet on out to 400 feet or more. Put a weighted bait down on the bottom or near the bottom. Also drift baits on the surface or even put them under the kite. And the best tackle is 30 to 50 pounds with a good piece of wire leader and a circle hook as well. And there's also a group of fishermen that shark fish off the beaches at night. They get on their surfboards and they paddle their baits out. Uh, I'm not too sure about that. I think I'll stay on the beach. And the most common offshore shark would be hammerheads, bulls, and lemons, but you never know what's going to swim by. And I don't claim to be a shark fisherman by any means, but we've caught just about every kind of shark over the years except for a great white. And then there's a few of those that are seen every year, although I've never seen one. And nowadays, you can hardly keep any sharks with all these new rules and regulations, plus half of them look the same, so I let them go anyways. And uh, here we got a picture. This is a bull shark we caught off the dock in Bimini about two weeks ago. And I'm over here in Bimini right now, and those things are swimming around as these guys are cleaning the fish off the end of the dock. Wow, that's Stay pretty offshore. cool. Go ahead, Jimbo. Yeah, oh, that's really cool. You got it. Well, the dolphin fishing remains good throughout the region. We've been finding schools of dolphin anywhere from 10 to 20 miles offshore. Most of them have been under birds. Now, some of these schools have been out in the middle of nowhere. Then we've also found them around weed lines and scattered sargassum. And then some of the schools have been mixed legal and sublegal fish. And then you hit a school and all the fish are in the five to eight pound range. So you just have to keep looking until you find the right school. Now some of the fish are being caught on troll ballyhoo or lures, but live bait has definitely been working the best. And if you come across a patch of grass or something floating that has bait underneath, it would be well worth your time to try and sabiki up some of these little baits underneath these uh, floaters or the grass. It's mostly going to be small blue runners and that's what those dolphins have been feeding the best on. Now staying inshore, moving inshore, bone fishing on the flats of Biscayne Bay has been good first thing in the morning before the water on top of the flats gets too hot. Look for tailing bonefish on the inside and outside flats from Soldier's Key, South Angel Fish Creek on the outgoing tides. Then after the water warms, look for the fish on the deeper edges of the flats over light-colored bottom. And then late in the afternoon or just after a rainstorm passes, when the water begins to cool, they're coming back on top of the flats. Best baits have been small crabs and crab pattern flies. And then we got snook fishing. It's starting to pick up throughout the southeast region. Fish are starting to school up in the inlets. They're also being caught around the piers and the jetties, and also the lit bridges and dock lights of the intercoastal waterway. Live pilchards, herrings, and mullet have been the best baits, but any other good live bait should work. They're also being caught on jigs and soft plastics. Now on the inlets, they've been biting the live bait drifted near the bottom on any tide. And the water's been, when the water has been murky, they've been biting throughout the day. And then if you got clear water, the mornings and evenings have been the best. And then around the bridges and piers, the alkaline tide in the evenings is when these uh, snook are going to be 
fighting the best for catch and release. All right, great report, Jimbo. I'm going to take a look at the Southeast hotspots from the Captain Harry's Fish and Supply Southeast region. Captain Jimbo says hit the Biscayne Bay flats early in the morning before it gets too hot and look for those tailing bonefish. And then offshore, look for dolphin offshore around the grass patches, floating debris, and any bird activity. Now, Bree, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Navionics. And I got my buddy Paul Miglia from Navionics. And Paul, we've got found a lot of really cool things. So let's just get right to it. You got it. Rick, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to be here. And, and thanks for teaching everybody a lot more about Navionics and sonar charts and, and how to read the contours and find more fish. Um, something I want to talk a little bit about today is really the navigation aspect and what sonar charts can do with that. And what we have here is uh, a government chart of Nassau Sound. Now, Russell and I actually spent a little time doing some sonar logs to update this area. Mm -hmm. And as you can see on this government chart here, you've got the little point that kind of sticks out there, up that yeah, green area, and you can area. see where there's some yellow land. And, mm -hmm. and this is just what basically you get when you buy your plotter, the chart that's embedded. So after we uploaded some sonar logs, we go to the sonar charts, and you can see how that point is oh now vanished. Yeah, the point's it's not a solid piece anymore. No, it's gone. You've got a cut through and you've got your little area here in the creek that's a lot wider from all the erosion. Again, giving you a lot more contours and a lot you know, safer area to travel through. We go to the next area on the government charts in Nassau Sound. This is the, or is, this is the area here where you first come in. And off the point right there, looks mm -hmm. like a clear passage. You're coming yeah, in at nighttime. Absolutely. Come flying in, you know, no problem. Well, we did sonar charts in that area. And uh, what we found out once we did the sonar logs for there, you found out that oh there's actually goodness. a big Now point. there's this big sand mound that has developed. Yeah, so unless you're trying to do Dukes of Hazard and, and jump into the little lagoon behind it there, it's, uh, it's something you want to update your chart on so that you find that piece of land, and it's very important that you're able to see this. So let's take a look at the next set of charts. So now here is an overall view of Nassau Sound, and you can right. see not a whole lot this of data. Is government chart. Correct, not a whole lot of data. We go over to the sonar charts. And you'll see once we get to that that there's a lot more overview on the sonar charts as far as the contours yeah, here where Russell there. and I have updated it. And you can see the deeper holes. You can see the island that's there. A little bit disappearing a lot you know, more of the channel. Right. And the last thing I want to show is everybody ask, what does really change in, in a year or two? I use my home waters of Stewart Inlet. And over in Stewart, we've got the government chart from a couple of years ago. Right. And you can just see there's your shoal, right. you know, basic inlet. But we go to a year ago with sonar charts. And you can see where this shoal right here on the sonar charts just in a year is kind of eroded away a little bit. Uh -huh. Moving on, we'll have the, you know, we'll have another one here where you see there's your shoal that's moved away a little bit. Exactly. And you've got your, you've got your passageway. Right. Then just 30 days ago on the new updated sonar chart, right. you're going to see where this is actually eroded away further. And there's actually a sandbar on, from 30 days ago that's appeared on this sonar chart right here. Right here. It's right in the middle of the channel. And that's why it's really important to update your charts with the freshest data using sonar charts to get more Paul, information. thank you so much for informing us, one, how to read them, but more importantly, the changes. We're lucky to have that. Thanks, Rick. Speaking of being lucky, hey, Bree, where are we going to go to next? <laughs> You're so good, Rick. Thanks, guys. That was great. But don't swim off. When we return, we'll be going off the deep end and hearing from our Central East Region captain. Plus, the Guy Harvey Research Institute is here to talk about shark tagging right here on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. Smile, Dave. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Chevy. Find new roads. Best parts, best prices. Bennett Auto Supply, Yeti Coolers, wildly stronger, keep ice longer. CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 25 years. Contender Boats, performance through innovation. Humminbird, simply, clearly, better. And King Sailfish Mounts, www.kingsailfish.com. Find summer the Chevy Summer Drive. Get 0% financing for 72 months plus a total value of $4,000 on this 2014 Silverado All-Star Edition and no monthly payments until the end of summer. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Yamaha's next generation V6 four strokes are changing the game. Mid-range power was awesome. Fuel the burn. 
It's unbelievable. I couldn't believe the speed and the fuel economy is pretty impressive. I mean, I couldn't believe the power. It was like a just. I was more like doing a quarter mile on a drag strip. And them things are like it's a whole other game. So I made the switch. Experience the difference for yourself during the Yamaha Discover V6 Offshore Demo Tour. See why we call it the game changer. It's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at the office. But down here in the Florida Keys, we have to disagree. Because with over 200 of the world's best charter boat captains and guides, there's no such thing as a bad day of fishing. The Florida Keys and Key West. Continuing the revolution. Faster, drier, even better built. Designed around Yamaha's latest technology outboards. Still built by the same craftsmen and anglers who launched the Bay Boat Revolution. Whether chasing world records, or time on the water with the family, or anything in between, there's a new Pathfinder model for you. Pathfinder, number one for a reason, still. Now it's time to go over the news and notes from the FWC. America's boating courses are being offered throughout the state of Florida. September 6th is Saltwater License-Free Fishing Day. And September 13th and 14th, make sure to check out the Florida Sportsman's Expo in Tampa. For more information, visit myfwc.com. And now it's time to go off the deep end. Well, we're here at the Jägermeister workbench, and hummingbirds off the deep end, yep. Dave, is about shark fishing well, this week. It's it's good that it's about sharks, because Florida, of all, there's 375 species of sharks. Florida has 50 of them. What? 50 of the 375. So we got a lot of sharks in Florida, and, you know, there's a lot of guys catching sharks. If you're trying to fish for anything else with a dead bait or even a live bait on the east coast of Florida in the summertime, there's a good chance that you're going to catch some kind of shark. Now, most of the time we on the East Coast, we got a lot of black tip sharks. We got spinner sharks that come in real close in the summertime. They're following the schools of the mullet. You know, Florida gets a lot of shark attacks, but really our shark attacks are little black tip sharks for the most part and spinner sharks that are trying to eat mullet and Spanish mackerel in the surf. And the surfers are out there and they're flat. They're all tan except for their palms of their feet and the palms of their hands and the soles of their feet. So that flashing gets them, that's what gets people bit. Right. The sharks thinking they're trying to eat a mullet or something. Now, if you're gonna be target sharks, you're obviously gonna have to use wire leader. Sharks, you know, they're known for their, their dental, you know, their, their dentures. They got a lot of teeth and, and uh, very sharp teeth. And, and if you try to fish with mono leader, you're not gonna catch them. Right. This is a number nine single strand wire, which is a good all-purpose wire. I think I think number nine breaks at like Mainly. 70 pounds or, well, it's 93 pounds, so it's number, number eight. So, you know, that's a that's a good pound test. And most sharks that we catch aren't gonna bust that hard single strand wire. Now this is, you know, I would use, uh, this is a, probably a double X hook. I would use a, a, a four X hook because, you know, you can pull hard on a shark. You know, you said that sharks pull hard. Right. They, although they pull hard, if you pull hard on them, they give up. You know, drag kills and drag right. kills sharks, especially. I mean, we catch great big sharks in very short periods of time when we put a lot of drag. Now, on. Dave, how do you do the haywire twist on well, braided, this is, coated? Well, this is a cool. You know, if you if you go to buy uh, uh, wire leaders, they can be pretty expensive. And this is a this is steel on, which is a plastic coated wire. And, and surf lawn, and you can get it from just about any tackle store, and you can build your own shark leaders really quick. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that steel on through your hook, this is a, a double X, or a four X actually, uh, Gamakatsu, and we're gonna twist it up a little while I'm holding it. Okay. Just a little Better twist, hurry. yeah, we're cool. And then we're gonna melt that plastic on the surf lawn, just like this, with a, with a lighter. Smoke. Tap it a little Smoke. bit. Smoke. Get it right near the end so it stays tight. How are you touching that, man? Uh, Dude. Uh, 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 nice. It's too Good hot. Good job. But Good that, job. you know, like this one I did a, a few minutes ago, that's 100% not when you go all wow. the way up. And you can build one after the other of those things relatively quick. 
Yeah. And you know, and have a, have a either a swivel on the other end so that you can go ahead and you, know, you can pull on that. It ain't gonna come apart. Even that one that we just only put two two wraps in. All right, Dave. But put well, a swivel on there to keep them from wrapping up. The sharks like to spin up when you get a hook. As in. we do, come on in here, Derek. We got Derek Bulk, uh, Burkhalter from the Guy Harbor Research Institute of NOAA Southeast University. And Derek, welcome to the show. But more importantly, let's talk a little bit some of the tagging programs that you've been doing for Guy Harvey. All right. Well, thanks so much for having us out today. Uh, I am a research scientist with Nova Southeastern University, mm -hmm. Guy Harvey Research Institute. Uh, we've been working with sharks all over the world, trying to get an idea of where they're going using some great technologies called satellite tags. So the same take... stuff that they're pushing in the marlins and stuff, right? Absolutely. So, so let's take a look. You guys have tagged Makos here more recently. And we want to take a look at how far this one Mako has traveled here. Wow. All right, so uh, this, this particular Mako is a small juvenile male. Uh, it was tagged in 2013 in Ocean City, Maryland. Uh, this guy has traveled um, about 14,000 miles wow. over the course of the last year. Is, is that what those little uh, dots are there? Is that the, the yellow and the white? Is those? Yes, so the different, dot, the different colors represent the different years. So the white dots on this particular track are 2013. The yellow dots are 2014. And there's one great big green dot right there at the end. And the great things about satellite tags is they can allow us to track these animals in almost real time. So that green dot is where that shark was about 10 days ago. So now, he went all the way back up there. Now let's take yep. a look at the shaded shoreline there, Derek. And, and I want you to tell me why that's important. So one of the things that we know about many sharks, but especially things like Makos, they're great recreational sport fish. They fight very well, like you guys have been talking about, uh, but they also taste pretty good as well. So there are commercial fisheries. Um, these different colors along the coastlines represent the areas where these different countries can actually uh, set the regulations for the fisheries there. So he's um, swimming a gauntlet from one place to the next. Now, how many make those did you tag, and have we lost any to commercial harvest? Yeah, so in 2013, we tagged nine different mako sharks, and actually three of those nine have been picked up by commercial fisheries in different areas. Hey, I'm so much smarter now than I was just two minutes ago. And thank you so much for coming in. Don't go anywhere. Thanks, All right, thank you Bree, very much. what we do need to keep going. So what region are we going to next? I do. I'm smarter too. Thanks for being with us, Derek. That was super interesting. Now up on the chopping block, though, is Captain Jim Ross from the Central East region, where you can expect quite a few species of shark are ready to be hooked up. Right, Jim? Oh, we sure do, Bree. You know, we've got black tips and spinners and hammerheads and sharp nose, and they're all feeding along the shorelines this week. In fact, we just had another shark attack down here at Indian Harbor Beach uh, on a little boy who just stepped in the water for a couple of seconds. They'd barely been there, but, uh, you know, a couple of minutes, uh, and mom turned around, and boom, little boy got bit. So be careful when you get out there, but there's a bunch of them out there in this region this week. They're hitting live pogies or just about any other kind of a cut bait that you want to use. And if you're trying to target them, you want to use a wire leader and put a, a VMC circle hook on there so they don't swallow the, the hook down inside. It's a whole lot easier to get a hook out uh, on a circle hook to get it out of a shark when it's around his lips than it is down in his throat when he's trying to chomp at you. Um, I like to use 20 to 30 pound suffix superior line when I'm using, uh, when I'm fishing for the sharks. It has really good uh, shock absorbing qualities to it. So that's one of the things that I look for in a line to make sure that that suffix is, uh, is gonna stand up to the challenge of those fish and their, their, their rough skin, and of course with those spinners, the type of jumps and twirls that they do. Now I like to use a six, about a five to six foot leader, a 50 pound test, to prevent some tail chafing and that kind of thing, and that also helps in landing the fish. And like I said before, a long dehooking device keeps your hands out of the bite zone, and I'm telling you, it, <laughs> you don't want to get anywhere near it when they get mad at you. Now our average shark is running about 10 to 25 pounds, but we have spinners up into the 80 pound range that we've been catching this week. Now, as far as the offshore report, uh, the red snapper, you know, we had another three-day open season this week. It was really good for some anglers and really poor for others that were targeting red snapper in this region. Now, I, for one, caught enough of this week's theme species to last me for another year uh, because I was just sharked up the entire time. And what's happened is we've had a little bit of cold water trying to trickle into a couple different places, and it kind of shut our bite off, especially this last Saturday and Sunday. Uh, but there was many anglers out there that had an incredible snapper bite on the spots they were on, and they did really good on that particular bottom structure. 
So, you know, it's, it's all in where you are. It's location, location, location. Some of those fish were into the 20 and 30 pound range, and I'm telling you, there's some really, really beautiful snapper in the Central East region. Now, we only have one more shot at this, and it's this coming weekend, the 25th and 26th. And the one thing that I want to say is it's a short window. Anglers really need to be courteous to one another out there. I, I particularly saw a lot of really, really poor behavior while I was out on the water. People would just drive right up to other boaters and park within feet of them. Now, the problem with that is is that it can turn dangerous because hooks can get caught on other people's anchor lines, or if you run somebody else's anchor line over, it could get in your prop. So just you know, be courteous out there and just give everybody at least a 100-yard buffer you know, while you're out there trying to fish those reefs and, 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 and especially those wrecks. Um, now, I've got a nice picture here, though. Team All In just absolutely crushed it this past weekend with a, a huge uh, array of fish that they caught, including red snapper. But they also got some beautiful mangrove snapper while they were out there targeting those reds. Let's go inshore, now, transitioning bud. In, yeah, transitioning inshore. Tarpon this week are still fantastic. We were four for five on uh, one of my trips this week, which is a, I love that conversion rate, I'm telling you. Uh, most of the fish right now are in the 10 to 40 foot depths again this week, just like they were last week. They're rolling just outside the surf break in the morning, and then you can cast large plugs. And it, really, right now, that Rapala Subwalk 15 on a 15 to 30 pound class outfit is a good one to use because it imitates those live pogies. And you can also use live pogies, or you can slow troll and drift them if you happen to be using them from a boat just outside of the surf break. Use a VMC 7385 8-aught or 9-aught size circle hook. That particular hook is, is one of the best tarpon hooks I have found. I really, really like it. Wait until you hear the line taken drag off the reel and then pick that thing up. You're going to get a much more positive hook set, and you're going to basically have a better chance at catching those fish. Most of our fish right now, most of our tarpon are running 50 to 150 pounds on most days. And I've got a really good picture here of Kyle Easel, uh, and this is a tarpon that we subdued both sides and took the uh, 7385 VMC back out of him. Now, I've also got mangrove snapper. Now, the guys and gals offshore did a really good job on the mangroves, but you know what? The guys and gals that are fishing inshore around the inlet jetties and the causeways are doing really good, especially in the Indian and Banana Rivers. You can rig a live shrimp on a one-eighth to one-half ounce hookup jig head, depending on how your current is in your particular area, and you want to fish it as close to the structure as possible. The mangroves often hold right in the shadow lines of the pilings of those fiddlers or those bridges. And you want to target um, them, especially on the sunny days, fish in the, fish in the shaded side of those particular structures. Now, our average mangrove in the lagoon system is running one to four pounds right now. And it's, you know, it's game on if you get on a good school of them. And you can even chum them up if you want to. So don't, you don't have to go offshore to get a nice mess of mangrove snapper in the Central East region this week. All right, thank you so much. Jim, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the hookup lures hotspot from the Central East region. Captain Jim says, inshore. Snook and Sebastian Inlet rig live bait fish on a 5 to a 7 0 VMC 7385 circle hook and fish near the catwalks or jetties. And then offshore shark on the deep reefs and wrecks in a 70 to 150 foot depths. Use any bait fish or squid on a standard bottom rig. And there's Never mind, just go Fish ahead. are just friends, go. not food. Finding Nemo reference now? No. Okay. Coming up, we're visiting the <laughs> East and Central West regions. Got shut down with that one. With the best fishing reports in the Sunshine State and our kids' fishing show is coming up, we'll tell you how our little ones can be a part of it only on the oh Chevy boy, Florida oh boy, oh boy, Insider oh boy, Fishing oh boy, Report. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. The best lures, period. Blue Water Outriggers, everything for your outdoor adventures. Guy Harvey Clothing by Aftco. Crokies, made in the USA. Drummond Community Bank. Costa, see what's out there. And Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. What is CCA? CCA has been representing recreational fishermen for over 25 years, and when your rights to fish are threatened, the CCA is there to make sure government regulators are making sound decisions. 
I'm a life member of CCA, and when fishery decisions are being made, the CCA in the room is fighting for our recreational rights. We need to give our kids the same opportunities to fish as we did. Do what I did. Go to CCAFlorida.org and join for only $25 so you can protect your recreational angling rights. Hi, I'm Harold Bennett. My dad started Bennett Auto Supply over 57 years ago. Things have changed since then. We've grown to 33 stores and opened a 93,000 square foot distribution center. But one thing has stayed the same. Our focus on the customer. That's why we have the most knowledgeable parts specialists in the business, and we only offer quality auto parts at the guaranteed lowest prices. The next time you need anything for your vehicle, think Bennett Auto Supply. Best parts, best prices, Bennett Auto Supply. Wandering out into this great unknown And when it's done, believe that I will yell it from that mountain high Find summer at a Chevy Summer Drive. Get 0% financing for 72 months plus a total value of $4,000 on this 2014 Silverado All-Star Edition and no monthly payments until the end of summer. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Rick, we've said it before, but we're going to say it again. One lucky winner and a friend, wow, I rhymed, yeah. will get a three-day, four-night fishing excursion to Casa Vieja Lodge in Guatemala. Not only will we be fishing for Pacific Sailfish, Blue Marlin, Dorado, and Yellowfin Tuna, but you'll be fishing with the one and only Captain Rick Murphy. Wow. <laughs> Plus, you'll get all of this great fishing swag, and all you have to do is go to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report.com and like our Facebook page to enter. Good luck. Wait till you see how good the food is. It's oh, unbelievable. Man. Oh, that sounds it's really amazing. good. All right, well, checking out the East Region with Captain Mike Holiday. He's saying the bull sharks sure love to hang out off Palm Beach, but really, who wouldn't? Hi, Mike. <laughs> hey, Bree. How are y'all doing tonight? Good. good. How are you, Hollywood? I'm well. So, you know, we've got all the sharks you want to pull out of my region, whether you fish from the beach, the bridges, or offshore from a boat. The four <laughs> species of sharks are bull sharks. Great hammerheads, lemons, and black tips or spinner sharks. And the bull sharks and the hammerheads are typically found on the reefs and wrecks. They've been particularly thick off Palm Beach County this summer and in anywhere from 80 to 140 feet of water. You know, just catch a bonita or 10, butterfly them, hang them over the side, and you'll be the king of shark land in about five minutes. For the black tips and lemons, pick the beaches, um, the north side of the inlets, and most of the beaches like, like uh, the House of Refuge, Particularly at night, uh, most of the anglers fish for them from shore. The bull sharks and hammerheads in my region average anywhere from, oh, 200 to 400 pounds. And some of the hammerheads border on that, we need a bigger boat size. So, you know, you'll want to fish 50 to 130-pound gear, match it up with some cable or single-strand wire, and a 15-no circle hook, uh, you know, pin on a chunk of bonita, mullet, barracuda, or a stingray and you'll get all the action your back can handle. For the black tips and lemons, a mullet or a jack creval, live or dead are great baits. You can drop down a 30-pound tackle for them uh, as long as you have a reel that holds 400 yards of lime. Average black tip and lemon shark is going to be around 100 pounds. And just to give you an idea of what we're looking at, you know, there's a photo there. That's uh, a, a big bonita. Uh, bite. Look at the size of the bite out of that bonita. Wow. And you can see the shark that bit that bite down in the right corner of the photo. So wow. that's the Bob Perret of, of Stewart took that photo. Wow. Now, late July and early August are when the snapper come in close to shore to spawn, and they're also in there to eat the turtles that are hatching on the beaches. So you'll find great snapper action right now on the shallower reefs in 25 to 65 feet of water throughout my whole region. The best fishing is going to be at night in areas like the sand pile off St. Lucie Inlet and around the power plant outflow in St. Lucie County. But just about every patch reef uh, and the ledge off Jupiter whole fish right now. For bait, you can use anything from pieces of squid on a chicken rig to ballyhoo or grunt plugs, live or dead sardines, filters or cigar minnows, pin those baits on a 2.0 to 4.0 VMC circle hook, 40 pound fluorocarbon leader. You probably need like 20 pound gear just to get you a good shot at some of the bigger fish. Average mangrove uh, and yellowtail snapper are going to be 1 to 2 pounds. Average mutton snapper is going to be 3 to 8 pounds right now. All right, well, let's go inshore, Hollywood. Well, you know, as we roll into August, the main body of the snook population is either in the inlet spawning or they're on the beaches beefing up on the juvenile thread fins and filters that are in those areas. The south side of Palm Beach Inlet, the north side of Jupiter Inlet, 
both sides of St. Lucie and Fort Pierce Inlets. They're all holding good populations of snook on the beaches. The Lake Worth and Geno Piers have good fish, as does Blowing Rocks and the Hope Sound uh, Wildlife Refuge, and also North Beach and Fort Pierce. In the inlets, live thread fins, croakers, sand perch, pinfish, and sardines. Those are going to be your top live baits. But you can get those fish to eat a boss shiner or a four inch sea shad in those Houdini colors at first light. And on the beach, those same lures and baits, only you can fish lighter tackle. And if you want to throw flies, you can throw like a polar fiber minnow. Those fish are spawning. So, you know, if you're going to fish for them, handle them gently. Try not to drop them. Make sure you revive them before you release them. Because, you know, treat them with respect. You might get to visit with them again later in the year. Uh, I got a photo for, of Snook. That's Ben Mallet uh, from Yamaha Outboards with a snook he caught and released. He was fishing swimming plugs in the St. Lucie Inlet. That's now, a- the other thing we got going, the mangrove snapper population of Fort Pierce and St. Lucie Inlets, they're off the chain right now. There's fish to five pounds being caught around the jetty rocks in those areas on the slack tide. That's the key, slack tide. The snapper are holding tight to the rocks when the tides are honking and then coming out of the rocks to feed when the tides start to slack. So if you're snook fishing, the tide lightens up, that's really a good time to switch over to fishing for snapper. Live sardines or pilchards are going to be the top bait, but shrimp or small sand perch or pinfish, they'll also work. Fish them on 20-pound tackle, a 30-pound fluorocarbon leader, and, and a smaller circle, looks like a 2.0 uh, VMC circle, that can just enough weight to hold bottom. You m- also might want to throw a bait out in the sand because there's been a few mutton snappers in the mix. But the average snapper right now around the jetties is going to be one to two pounds or fish to five pounds. You know, Mike, bass fishing sometimes this time of year can be tough. How is it right now? Well, you know, the water levels continue to rise on Lake Okeechobee. That's got all the bass that were out there in the open water moving back into the vegetation to feed on the bluegill and shad populations. The outside grass lines are Ritter Island, also out in front of JNS fish camps. And then on the northwest corner around the east wall, they're all holding big numbers of fish right now. That's the key. This is really a numbers game. Anglers are catching 20 to 50 fish a morning, throwing topwater plugs, boss shiners, or lipless crankbaits in those shad colors. And, and you're just throwing at the schooling fish that are busting shad in those areas on the surface of first life. Watch for birds dive, and that'll show you where the shad are. And then as it starts to heat up, switch over to an 8-inch dune bug or red shad colored worm. Bigger worm, rig Texas style, work the edges of the grass for those big fish. And then always, you know, live shiners, fish along those grass lines are going to produce nonstop action, even in the heat of the day. Average bass is going to be one to three pounds, but it's more numbers. 40, 50 fishermen get off the water by 10 o'clock and beat the heat. Thanks, Mike. Here's the East Region Hotspots brought to you by waterwaycafe.com. Inshore, mangrove snappers on the slack tide in St. Lucie Inlet fish the rocks with juvenile sardines or pilchards. And then offshore, high-speed troll for wahoos in 200 to 400 feet of water from dawn till 9 a.m. From Lake Worth to Juneau Inlet. And then Williamson wahoo catchers and Yazuri bonitos would be working real well. Dun. 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 <laughs> okay, sorry, I had to do that. When it comes it's to expected. catching sharks with Captain Jeff Page in the Central West region, it's pretty much a shark buffet. Tell us all about it, Captain. All right, you guys. You know, in the Starbright Central West region, we definitely have no lack of sharks, especially in the summer months, being May through, say, August, September. Well, incidentally, Rick, that's when the tarpon are the thickest, too. But our shark bite is pretty much up to the angler what type he wants to catch and what size he wants to catch. First, our most popular and abundant, the black tip, and he can be taken over wrecks, reefs, and also amongst the big threadfin schools that are out in the Gulf. And those things can be in as close, the threadfin schools can be in as close as 100, 200 yards off the beach, and on out. Uh, you can also catch the black tips out in the middle of Tampa Bay as well as Charlotte Harbor. Any big body of water where there's good current, the gulf's not too far away, and there's lots of bait. You can also catch him by anchoring up and drifting dead baits like jack, mullet, etc. on stout wire leader tackle. And he, he can be chummed up to the top with live thread fins or pilchards. And then you can throw topwater plugs or fly at them like you do down the Everglades. The yeah. average black tip, he's about zero to 75 pounds. All right. Now, for the big, the big sharks, a.k.a. bulls and hammerheads, Boca Grand Pass, Egmont Pass, as well as any section of the beach where the tarpons are holding up are a great place to start. 
at night. It's as easy as anchoring up near a reef or a wreck and chumming those big boys to you. All in all, Central West is a sharker's, shark man's paradise. And I've got a nice photo a friend of yours and mine, shark man Bobo Johnson down in Charlotte Harbor with one of his clients. Wow, look at Bo. All right, <laughs> let's go ahead and stay. What do you got for me offshore? Mangrove snapper, the mang bite remains strong. I heard Hollywood talking about it. And especially in 110 to 140 feet of water over wrecks and ledges, as well as smaller areas. Don't pass up your smaller areas that you find on your hummingbird bottom machine. Uh, Captain Jason Sherrill, the Bad Habit, reports his clients are not only catching their limited bangs, but they're getting some nice yellowtails as well. He's been getting them on live shrimp or filtered from a half-ounce hookup jig head. Rolling inshore, species one, redfish. The red bite keeps getting better and better, Rick, especially in the north part of the region. Cherisea Bay, as well as Palmasola and the Long Bar area. And then over on the west side, Tarpon and Jackass Key and the Fort DeSoto area have been some more of the productive areas. What I'm doing is getting out early around daylight, throwing topwater bone chartreuse skitter walks in and around the bait schools that are already up on top of the bars uh, because the tides are high then. And then and when the tides start to fall, I'm throwing that saltwater assassin Mama 14 Carat Elite Shiner rigged on an eight ounce hookup to get it. The whole time, I'm doing my best to avoid the big max of floating grass. Captain Rob Gordas had some great success casting pork finfish ahead of the schools in the Fort DeSoto area, and I've got a nice photo that Captain Rob sent me of him and a happy client with the redfish they got last week. All right, what? These two. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Snook. Lots of catch and release snook throughout the region. And the best chance of getting a big girl is going to be in the passes and inlets and at night. Live filtered, pinfish, and ladyfish are your best bet on the outgoing tide. And I got a photo tonight of Chase Carter with a big snook that he caught at night with Captain Billy Alster. All right, good report from the uh, Starbright Central West region. And Jeffrey, I'm going to go and take a look at the Tires Plus hotspots. Inshore tarpon, still lots of tarpon throughout the entire region, especially along the beaches. Pinfish under a cork are the best bet. And then offshore red groupers, nice reds holding on hard bottom and 120 <laughs> feet of water, especially in the northern part of Jeffrey's region, Bree. Had enough shark talk yet? Nope. Didn't think so. When we come <laughs> back, we're going to see what new products Dave, for us, Dave has for us at the workbench and check out the Keys region. Stay hungry. <laughs> what you shooting there, Dave? Chum. Chummer. What you shooting? It's Summer. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. Hook up lures, premium lures for serious anglers. FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Guy Harvey, artist, explorer, marine scientist, conservationist, diver, and fisherman. La Jolla Resort, a place for family and fishermen. Maverick Boat Company, makers of premium boat brands, Maverick, Hughes, and Pathfinder. Navionics, we start where the road ends. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha Forward Thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel-efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all-new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. You know there's more to it than luck. There's fishing the right bait, the water temperature, the wind, the season, and then there's the boat. We'll put it simply, the boat matters. To own a contender is to own the best sport fishing boat on the market, period. Contender offers the most comprehensive model range with bigger, faster, and more fuel efficient boats than the competition. There's only one choice for serious anglers. Contender Boats, performance through innovation. Oh, there he is. Hey, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fat boy. Can't get none of this. Look at 
Let me. I got moves. I go left. I go right. I go left again. Watch this. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Oh, that is. Psych. I'm so erratic. I don't even know where I'm going. Come on, Chubby Cheeks. Come on. Come on, Bucket Bob. Come on. Come get some of this. I can do this all day long. <laughs> Look at me. Watch this. Come on. Come on. Your mama's so fat that she can't get out the fish net. Ow. All right. I'll give you that one. We're over here at the Jägermeister workbench. Every week we get to talk about new cool stuff, Yes, Dave. we do. My favorite part. So tell me. Uh, this is the new Yeti Hopper. This was a big push at the iCast show we just went to. Uh, really cool, portable cooler from Yeti that you can you know, throw in your uh, boat or wherever. It's six and a half gallons. This, this, water, this, thing, this waterproof zipper up here is, is uh, very tough. One of the highest tech waterproof zippers ever. And that that thing won't leak in your car. This thing holds six and a half gallons of ice and whatnot. It's got a really high-tech food grade lining inside, and it's got this dry stuff outside, this dry hide, they call it. It's the same stuff they make the, the high uh, impact uh, rafts and stuff they use on the Colorado River and whatnot. It's also got an EVA, EVA foam bottom so that it keeps the bottom, you know, if you're in a in a boat and it won't, the water won't go through either way. So it's waterproof inside and out. Yeah, but you know, if you're thinking about tailgating too, yeah, a lot of times you set a bag like this on the ground, right? and the heat messes up the bottom of the bag. Right, it gets wet. And same thing in, the, in, a, in your car. You know, you'll be taking it in your car and this thing won't leak in your car. I mean, it, cool. you won't get the water, you won't get a big wet spot in your floorboard. This thing's awesome. It's, you know, it's got nice handles that aren't gonna rip off, it's shoulder strap. And it'll hold 18 beers and, you know, All that's right. plenty. <laughs> 18 beers. 18 beers is plenty for me. And Dave, right. in the commercial break, you were shooting stuff. Well, this is the, this is the chummer. You know, this is a little, uh, little deal to use. So how does that work? You put your what dead chum. You? I don't know where it went. Somebody Just stole chunks it. chunks of chum? Yeah, you put your chunks of chum in there. Okay. You know, your dead baits or even live baits. You put a little Let's live baits in there. And you shoot it up for it. You don't shoot it like this or something bad's going to happen. You shoot it up like that. You, know, you got to roll those up tight, dude. All right, it's tight. Come roll on, relax. Tight. Here we go. Here we go. That's going to go. Oh, oh, that's man. nice. Man. See, that's why you should never do this on TV. Shoot this one I'm going to try to hit Bree. Watch. Oh, God. Dave, uh, turn the thing right side there, up. Right. That's there so went. sad. Turn yeah, the well, thing right side up, man. You don't ever shoot the, this no, in the no, hood, dude. No, you, you don't you shoot do a this. slingshot no, they told like me, that. They told me, to, seriously, they told me you have to do it this way. And I, oh, my goodness. You, you, do you always do what they tell there, you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you chum, you they will come. That? This is the ultimate you know, attracting tool, T-shaped frame, nice yeah. rubber, and it, will, it, it worked good when I rolled the balls up. You, oh, so you, you're yeah. blaming it on I didn't have tight balls? Exactly. <laughs> I can't believe that. Exactly. That sucks. This is the Bubba Blade. This is a new Bubba Blade. This is a nine inch tapered fillet Bubba Blade. It's real flexible. You can get down there and really lean on it. It's you know, stainless steel with titanium and it's got a Teflon coating on it. So when you're sliding it through the fish, you know, sometimes yeah. the meat will stick to the blade. Yeah. You know, when you're trying to fillet a fish, won't do that with that Teflon. It's got a great rubberized grip. It gets real sticky even when it's wet, and you can see it's got this nice, uh, you know, like a guard on here to keep all the spines and stuff off yeah. you. Really cool little uh, grips for your thumbs and right. fingers when you want to get stuff out. Yeah. So really good knives by Blubberly. Also comes with a nice nylon sheath that won't go bad on you. All right. Uh, also, we got these. You know, we've had some of these little snips on here before from Boomerang. Right. Well, this is their long snip. You know. That was one of the problems you had with the with the older ones. Mm -hmm. You know, they still cut braid exceptionally well, but the blades were so small. Sometimes you had a, had a little trouble, especially with your old fellow like me, and can't see very well. Well, <laughs> when, you, <laughs> when you've got the longer the longer little snips on there, these are stainless steel. You know, all the boomerang tools come with a 36 inch little extension thing you can put on your belt right. or your shirt. If you're fishing with any kind of braided line. You gotta have one of these things. I, 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 if I misplace one of those things, I, I freak out. I cannot stand it not to have one of those things. All right, this is a. These are some pelagic shorts. These guys won the best lifestyle at the ICAST show that we were just at. This is their Fortech, uh, which means that they stretch four ways. Which you know, again, for me, 
I like things that stretch because uh, I'm stretching every day. It seems like, <laughs> but th these are called the these are called the sonar. As you can see, it looks like a little. I'm, I'm blocking your camera time. Right. But yeah, this is a, a sonar pattern, very popular with the boys. You know, in the back deck. That's uh, cool. Yeah, they got nice pockets all the way around. Uh, a place for your pliers, reinforced for your pliers. They dry really easily, and they have the tie up. You know, very I like, well. I like the out. tie and the, and the zip, or the Velcro. You know, it, we'll get to that tomorrow, All right, or the next so? day, or the All next right. show, All whenever right. the heck we, we get together again. We can do that. But this, I love this Yeti thing. I had to I had to put it out in my car before it started a fist fight at work. Yeah, you did good. Yeah. Hey. Thank you. I'm excited about all the new products that you got to see and endure, you know. But more importantly, Dave, we also have a new Yamaha Sales Choice event. This actual event just started July 15th. It's going to go through September 5th. And the great part about it is you can actually get five years of warranty protection or 750 in dealer credit, depending on which model you're buying. You go the good part one. about this is it goes all the way up to our big motors. So go to YamahaOutboards.com and find out more information. And Bree, speaking of more information, we need some, so go ahead and take it away. Sometimes you guys are just so entertaining. Just sometimes, though. Okay, now we know there's no shortage of sharks in the Keys, so we have Captain Randy Tao on the line to narrow it down for everyone. Go ahead, Randy. Hey, good evening, fish fans. You know, we've got sharks in the Keys on the Atlantic side, we've got them on the Bay side, and in our backcountry, and we also have them around the bridges. Now, the bridge fishing... That's what I grew up doing. I would come down to Channel 2, Channel 5, Long Key, 7 Mile, mm. Bahia Honda, and I would shark fish off these bridges and catch some pretty big sharks. And um, you can still do that today, I'm sure, with a lot of these bridges. But if you're more of the offshore guy, you're going to want to look on some of the offshore humps we have, same place you're going to catch your tunas. There's some really big sharks this time of year, and you want to be set up with a big heavy rod and a bonita or even a tuna or a barracuda is going to be your best bait out there. But there's some really big tiger sharks, uh, bull sharks, dusky sharks, and even some hammerheads and a great white every now and then. And if you go to the back country, you know, we have sharks back there just as big. Just because it's on the bay side doesn't mean they're small. But we've got some clear water where you can sight fish a lot of these sharks. And it's really exciting for people, and especially kids, to get up on a flat where you can chum up a shark and catch them. It's certainly something that they're very cooperative most of the time, and you can uh, catch them on light tackle a lot lighter than you would offshore, mainly because of the water. You're fishing in two or three or four feet of water versus 500 if you're offshore. But the backcountry fishing, all you need is a piece of fresh bait, a short piece of uh, number 10 wire, and lay it out on the bottom with any kind of current, and you're going to get a shark bite, I can almost guarantee you. I've got a photo of an average-sized lemon shark that we catch around the Flamingo area. All right, Randy, what do you got for us offshore, bud? I mean, uh, inshore, I'm sorry. You know, snook fishing the last couple of months has been great. I haven't taken advantage of it as much as I would like. I'm getting ready to, though. But talking to a lot of the guys, they're finding plenty of snook around Flamingo. They're finding them around the shorelines. And depending on the type of boat you have, some guys are finding them up on the flats with the redfish, and they're sight casting to some of these redfish, and some are a snook, and some of these guys are finding them on the shoreline. Now, I like fishing the shoreline with live pinfish on a uh, 3 8 ounce hookup is one of my favorite uh, baits and, and lures to fish for these snook. And, you know, the key is being there at the right time. You've got to have water on some of these shorelines, when the tide's out real low, those fish are off the shoreline. So you want to have a tide that's important to be there at the right time, or you can fish up along the trees and find these snook up in there. I've got a photo of young Johnny Long and his buddy Jason with a nice snook we caught a few days ago. Nice photo, Randy. All right, what else you got for me, bud? Grouper. You know, I love refishing groupers and snappers, some of my favorite stuff to do. And this time of year, you can find some groupers when you're yellowtailing. If you've been there for a little while, drop a bait down. You never know what you've got chummed up under your boat. Or if you want to go target a grouper, you can catch some grunts or pinfish, cigar minnows, ballyhoos, any kind of live bait, 
slide out to some of these rocky bottoms. You'll find them right on your Navionics chart, and they'll say rocky bottom. And you can drift in these areas with live bait and enough weight to get to the bottom, and you'll probably find some red groupers and black groupers, along with some of the wrecks between 120 and 200 feet of water. You want to use a heavy rod, something that you can stop them with. A grouper's going to take you back into structure, unlike a mutton snapper. So you want to have a pretty heavy rod to lock up on them when you get that bite so they don't take you down. I've got a photo of my friend Michael from Russia with one of the groupers he caught the other day, reef fishing. Man, that Michael Sinatra, is that the same guy? Didn't he catch a big tarpon with you too? He, You know, he had a great trip. He comes every year before the ICAST, and uh, we just got into a little bit of everything this year. All right, man. Go ahead. What, what else you got for me offshore? You know, this time of year is is a great time to go sword fishing. I like doing it at night. A lot of guys are doing it during the day. Certainly, uh, you know, the daytime bite is nice, but you're, you're really handicapped with one rod. You're fishing it down deep. And the night fishing's a little different where you can put a spread of four to six rods out and vary the depth between 50 to 400 feet. And uh, it's a little bit different in that when you get a bite, you can fight them almost like uh, you would a regular fish without having to worry about the fish taking you to the bottom and back and forth. And uh, this time of year, you get a nice night. We have plenty of calm nights, and uh, it's certainly a lot of fun to get out there, put your hydroglow light over uh, the side, and that'll light up around the boat just enough so that you can see your line and you can see your rod tips. And it, it doesn't sound like much, but it will certainly let you know if you're getting a bite before you get it, and that's the, uh, the key to that light around your boat. I've got a photo of George Keggy with a nighttime swordfish we caught. All right, great report, Randy. Thanks for all the photos. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the La Jolla hotspots from the Florida Keys. Captain Randy suggests that inshore mangrove snappers fit the channels in the backcountry, anchor in six to eight feet of water, fish a quarter ounce hookup and a small pinfish or cut them in half. And then offshore, swordfish, nighttime drift, 1,200 to 1,700 feet of water, staggering your baits from 50 to 400 feet, depending on the moon, and use a single hook squid with the LP Disco Light. Now, what do you think about that? Shark bait, ooh -ah. oh, yeah. Another Finding Nemo reference oh, you don't understand. Don't okay, know. now it's time to tell you about some tournaments in the Florida Keys. It's okay, Rick, we'll All catch right. up later. Okay. The Reef Light Shootout Fishing <laughs> Tournament set for Saturday, August 2nd, Big Pine Key features a grand prize of $3,500 for the heaviest dolphin. The sixth annual Spartan Fishing Tournament, planned for August 22nd and 23rd in Isla Mirada, is a family-friendly fishing event with backcountry and offshore divisions. The Robert James Sales Slam Tournament, scheduled for September 5th through the 7th in Key West, is the first of three tournaments in the annual Redbone Celebrity Tournament Series in the Florida Keys. The event raises funds for cystic fibrosis treatment and research. The Isla Mirada Invitational Fall Fly Bonefish Tournament, set for September 10th through the 12th, is the Keys' oldest bonefish fly tournament. It's also among the most prestigious bonefish fly tournaments in the world. Past grand champions include Flip Pallet, Billy Pate, Carl Hyacin, and Andy Mill. Speaking of Andes, let's hear from Andy Newman, who's going to tell us about more tournaments in the Florida Keys. Whether on land or sea, invasive species can create serious challenges for Florida's native plants and animals. And in the state's saltwater ecosystem, lionfish are the top enemy. Divers can earn cash prizes and help rid Key Largo's waters of lionfish during the Lionfish Derby. <clears throat> it's set for Saturday, September 13th. The Reef Environmental Education Foundation is sponsoring the event in partnership with the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. There's a $3,500 prize purse with awards for the most lionfish captured as well as the largest and smallest individual lionfish. More information at reef.org and of course more details on this and other events on the Florida Keys website. It's flakeys.com. Thanks Andy. Okay shark fans keep your fins up because after this short break we're bringing you Hot off the press reports from the Southwest and Panhandle region right here on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Chevy, find new roads. Alukai, fit by nature, crafted by hand. Best parts, best prices. 
Bennett Auto Supply, the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. Rapala, catch the latest at rapala.com. Startron, cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. And Yamaha, reliability starts here. Summer Drive. Get 0% financing for 72 months plus a total value of $4,000 on this 2014 Silverado All-Star Edition and no monthly payments until the end of summer. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Continuing the revolution. Faster, drier, even better built. Designed around Yamaha's latest technology outboards. Still built by the same craftsmen and anglers who launched the Bay Boat Revolution. Whether chasing world records, or time on the water with the family, or anything in between, there's a new Pathfinder model for you. Pathfinder, number one for a reason, still. I'm Captain Rick Murphy, and I'm a life member of CCA. Why am I so involved with CCA, you ask? Because I want our fisheries to be in better shape for my kids and their kids. CCA is working to ensure the future of recreational fisheries and the rights of recreational anglers. The future of fishing starts today with you. How do you want to leave things with your kids? If you're like me, you'll want to make the right choice and go to joinccaflorida.com right now. Welcome back everyone. Something I know I'm looking forward to, Rick, is our annual kids fishing show, which is just around the corner, Wednesday, August 13th. We are inviting you and your little kiddies to our studio for a great show all about kids and fishing. All you need to do is go to our website at ChevyFloridaInsiderFishingReport.com and RSVP. Space is limited, so hurry up. That's going to be so much that fun. Oh my gosh, I'm so best. excited. I've already invited kids. Okay. You have? What? Okay. All right, moving on to the southeast region where you can find sharks pretty much everywhere. We <laughs> we bring to you Captain Ronnie Houston. <laughs> Come on, Ronnie, give it to us. <laughs> well, you know what? Sharks in my region can be caught inshore, offshore, and in the backcountry areas all throughout the region. Now, the most common are bull, bulls, black tips, nurses, and occasional hammerheads. Now, offshore, you want to concentrate on structure, schools of bait, and migrating fish. Depending upon when the migrations are, what type of fish, and what type of year, what time of year. Inshore, you want to concentrate on passes, grass flats, edges, and on the offshore side, large, large live baits, cut baits, and areas that are chummed heavy will attract these fish. On the inshore side, the lower stages of the tide, these fish can be seen cruising the beaches, as well as out on the water on the shallow flats, out of the water. Just about anything will catch these fish. Large live mullet ladyfish, pinfish, as well as cut and in chunks, or even butterfly. Bucktails, speed jigs, top waters, lip plugs, and like I say, on that part too, areas that are heavily chum will attract these fish. Heavy tackle for offshore, light tackle inshore, especially in open water, and if you're specifically targeting sharks, trace of wire is strongly recommended for better results. Now still on the offshore side, the cobias, concentrate right now from Stump Pass to Fort Myers Beach, Fishing wrecks, 18 to 25 miles out. You can anchor up and drop large live baits as well as chumming to draw fish to the top. You can also throw chugging lures to try to bring these fish up or simply drift across the area with baits out the back. Keep an eye out for turtles or rays on top. Live pinfish, grunts, and herring have been working on the bottom as well as sight casting to the fish. Average size of the fish have been anywhere from 18 to 35 pounds. Now, before I go into my inshore uh, report, I still get people emailing and questions asked of why some of these Yamaha motors they're buying might not be running right. Got to remember, these motors aren't indestructible. You ain't going to buy them and they're going to run forever. It's real important, propping the motor right, 
servicing your motor, and using the right additives to make these motors run right. Any one of those three guys, motor ain't going to run right. So make sure you take care of one of those three. On the inshore side, you want to concentrate on the snooks. Fishing the beaches all through the region, early morning, outgoing, and late afternoon incoming. You can walk the beaches looking for these snook tight or fish the first two troughs. These fish seem to be keyed in on schools of smaller bait right now. So silver spoons, white and chartreuse bucktails, two to three inch lip plugs and chrome, white and chartreuse, also live pilchards, and the three and a half inch bass assassin dye dappers in smoke and shad or snowstorm and color. Patience and stealth pays off when trying to catch these fish right now. Also, the redfish. Fish in the Cerro Bay area from Starvation Key to Hickory Pass, along the East Wall and Independent Islands, along oysters, early morning outgoing, using live shrimp and pelters under a cork, or top water walk the dog lures, as well as silver spoons and mullet schools late afternoon. One key thing is, with the water temps heating up, cut baits such as mullet, ladyfish, and pinfish in the afternoon on knocker rigs may make you successful in catching these fish. All right, great report from the CCA Southwest Region, Ronnie. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Florida outdoor experiences from the southwest region. Let's see, inshore, mangrove snappers Coon Key to Lane Cove fish the middle bays on lower water along the deadwood, chumming, and using cut shrimp. And then offshore, permit, Naples to Fort Myers Beach, 7 to 15 miles out fishing wrecks using live crabs or bright bucktails tipped with a shrimp. Give me that bucktail little smack. Look at this guy. What do you think? Look what are you doing? What you do think, you think it's a teddy bear? It's a it shark. It is. It's a shark. <laughs> he right. wants to bite you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now we have our captain from the Panhandle region. Oh my gosh, you just <laughs> did that. Like, okay. Okay, I know Pat's <laughs> chomping at the hook to give his report. Pat, Captain Rick just hit me in the face with a shark. <laughs> Go I ahead. I was give wondering me. what just happened. I tell you what, we have plenty of shark fishing opportunities in the panhandle, both inshore and offshore. In the bays, it's primarily blue sharks or bull sharks and black tips. And over in St. Joe Bay, they also have a bunch of uh, the scallop head, hammerhead sharks. Choice baits in the bay are going to be butterfly ladyfish and bonita fillets. In the Gulf, you can sight fish black tips along the beaches, usually within the gully between the second sandbar and the beach. Uh, use live cigar minnows, herrings, or a split ladyfish. Pretty much any of the wrecks and reefs offshore that have an abundance of bait and or game fish are likely to have some, some of the tax man hanging around. So fish a large hardtail, almaco jack, or bonita slab over around these areas and you're sure to get a shark. Uh, and then also in the springtime, the, the cobias swim along the beach. We've got some really big mako sharks that come in and hunt these cobias. And this past spring, there were three sharks caught between 650 and 800 pounds right off the beach. Um, and one of them, the 800-pounder, was actually caught right off of the beach. <laughs> and there's a photo there of my brother, Double, D boat, Double D's boat, Donnie Deneen, the sure lure. And that's a 720-pound mako they caught just off the second sandbar off of the bar beach. Wow, that's cool, Pat. All right, what Very. else you got for us offshore? Hey, the king mackerel, the bread and butter of the half-day charter fishing, is, is still doing very well. Mexico Beach and the structure off of Panama City is loaded with the king mackerels in the 10 to 12, 10 to 12 pound range. There's some bigger fish being caught off of Destin um, around the natural bottom and some of the fads. Uh, this past week, quite a few 30 plus pound fish and some fish over 50 pounds were landed. Basically, what you want to do is fish the bait congregations and structure in 60-plus feet of water, slow troll or fly line a live cigar minnow, herring, or speedo on a stinger rig. You can also chum these areas with live pilchards, menhaden chunks, and get them up on a fly. If you're going to use a fly, I would go with a deceiver or a, a minnow imitation with a wire bite tip. But the king mackerel bite has been a very good bite this summer. All right, let's go Moving inshore. inshore. Yeah. Yeah, the Captain Brent Remitty over in Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe. He reports a very good red fishing bite in St. Joe Bay. Uh, there's abundance of boating attack, boating activity. Uh, the guys are in the south end of the bay chasing the scallops. All those boats have pretty much pushed the fish out of the south end of the bay up to the north, northern end of the bay. And he, uh, Captain Brent reports nice schools of upper slot redfish on the flats between Eagle Harbor and the point. And he also reports that just off of uh, Town Beach, which is pretty much offshore of the church in Port St. Joe, the wade fishermen are doing very well with redfish. Either place you want to fish, use a Johnson Gold Spoon as a prospecting lure. Once you find the area that the fish are in, slow down a little bit, and then you can fish them with a soft plastic jerk bait 
on a worm hook or even on a light jig head. The fish are running three to six pounds. And then finally, if you just want to catch some fish inshore, the ladyfish, bluefish, and Spanish mackerel are producing. All of the flats, the sand grass edges near the passes in any bay in the Panhandle right now have plenty of fish on them. Shiny lures retrieved erratically and rapidly will definitely produce the best action. Cast master spoons, gotcha lures, noisy topwater baits will all do well. Tie on two to three feet of a 30 to 40 pound mono or fluorocarbon. It's going to minimize your cutoffs from the toothy fish and it's also going to give you some abrasion resistance from the ladyfish. And then use a light spinner rod. 10, 10 pound braid is going to do very well, give you plenty of sport and have a have uh, plenty of distance on your cast. So the inshore scene, although it's late in the summer and hot, there's still plenty of fish to be caught. Hey, Pat, I got a question for you. You know, on the out of here, you've been fishing for your boss for a long time. What's the biggest shark and the most memorable shark that you can think of while you were maybe out blue marlin fishing or even sword fishing? Any shark story, give it to me. Probably the, bi the biggest shark or the most memorable shark, it was not, actually not on the out of here. It was on um, the... Oh gosh, Captain Mark Wren's boat. Me and me and Mark and Bob Welniak were out sword fishing on the Imagine, and all of a sudden we said, "Whoa, look at the size of that fish!" It just ate her bait, and it was a big mako shark, and it did a huge flip flop jump, not 30 feet off the stern of the boat, and then it commenced to rapidly deplete a 50 of all of its line. So you lost the battle on that. Oh yeah, we did lose it. Oh, <laughs> that's it, okay. It was, it was most mem memorable, that was the question. You know, anytime you see a big shark jumping out of the water, it's like a super freaky deal. Yeah, like Especially that one if it's only like 25 feet off the back of your boat. All right, so thank you so much, Pat. We're gonna go ahead and get to the Blue Water Outrigger hotspots from the Panhandle region inshore. Fish a whole bonita off the point of St. Joe Bay for big sharks and use heavy tackle and wire cable leader. And then offshore, amberjack season is open. Fish lively blue runners over the high relief wrecks and pinnacles in 130 feet of water. Now, Bree, let me ask you something. I know I messed up your hair and you'll get over it. But I don't care about my hair. I want to ask you, you want to go shark fishing sometime? I would love to go shark fishing. Have you ever caught a big shark? I haven't caught a big one. I once caught a baby hammerhead shark which, in Marco Island, which was really cool. Oh, really? I wasn't expecting it, yeah. That's cool. I know, so, but I'll go shark fishing with you. All right, so we want to catch a big shark. Uh, okay. You ready? Yeah, better I can do bring, that. Better bring the guns. I've always got suns out, guns out. I know. Okay. I didn't ask you to take the, the, <laughs> all that suns out, guns out, buns out. No, no, no. no just let's go just shark the guns. fishing. All right, all right. Don't think you're off the hook yet, guys, <laughs> because when we come back, we're checking out the Coastal Conservation Minute Tip and what the Northeast region has to offer. Look at him. Look at him. He's looking at you, Bree. The careful. Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. Tires Plus, Total Car Care, the IGFA, conservation through education. Get your hands wet. Florida Outdoor Experience, Lumber Rock, Captain Harry's Fishing Supply Company, Introducing Helmmaster, Yamaha's first fully integrated digital boat control system. With Helmmaster, you can start your outboards with a swipe of a fob and control them with a single lever. Outboard trim and steering friction adjust automatically as you accelerate and decelerate. Adjust engine speed with the touch of a button. The Helmmaster joystick provides the means to navigate and dock precisely with confidence and ease. Take control of your next vessel with Helmmaster at your command. Casa Vieja Lodge, Guatemala. Startron is a multifunctional fuel additive that uses enzyme technology. Startron cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. Engines powered by Startron treated fuel start easily and run smoothly with fewer emissions and better fuel economy. Startron restores octane to old substandard fuel. Startron's enzyme formula enhances combustion for a more complete fuel burn. Startron. It's not the engine, it's the fuel. Won't drift out into this 
great unknown And when it's done, believe it, I will yell it from that mountain high Find summer, the Chevy Summer Drive Get 0% financing for 72 months plus a total value of $4,000 on this 2014 Silverado All-Star Edition and no monthly payments until the end of summer. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Today's Costa Conservation Minute is about wicking your boat. So you're thinking to yourself, what is wicking your boat, Captain Rick? Now remember, Costa Sunglasses is very sensitive to what goes on in the environment as well as conservation. So if you take a rag and cut yourself a strip, and then after you get done washing the boat using a long screwdriver, you're simply going to take half of this rag and we're gonna stick it through the drain plug into the bilge. And the reason why this is very important, guys, is because by it laying in the bottom of the bilge, it's going to absorb water. Then the dry part of the rag is going to dry out the rag as it starts to dry the process. The reason why this is important is one, we're not going to have any chemicals that maybe could be pumped out into the environment later on. But number two, it eliminates moisture so that no mildew collects inside your bilge, which is going to be something that you don't have to worry about cleaning up later on. Now remember, this is one of those things that's very important to the environment, and that's why it's today's Costa Conservation Minute. Dang, speaking of guns, whoa, How about that? tricep sticking out, here we go. How about that? Okay, just when you think you're going to need a bigger boat, reference? Yes. Jaws. Jaws. Here comes Captain Russell Theron from the Northeast region with a report that will have Jaws swimming away in fear. Hey, Russ, man. Hey, hey, Bree, how you doing? And how are you doing, Rick? I'm doing good, yeah, Russell. what, in the last several years, shark fishing is something that I have really fallen in love with, especially in summer months. I really enjoy it. And Bree, you're absolutely right. The great white sharks follow the humpbacks and the right whales, you know, when they're calving off the coast of Jacksonville during the winter months. And that's why Chris Fisher and the O-Search team come to town. Northeast Florida has the best shark fishing in the state of Florida. The shark fishing here is very underrated. You know, the reason why the shark fishing is so good is because of our shrimp industry up here that we have. Now, the sharks feed on the bycatch that's discards from the shrimp boat and provides the anglers a variety of ways of catching sharks. I love to target sharks because they're fast, they're unpredictable, and because they're also great jumpers. The summer months of June and July and August are the best months to target the sharks. You want to use a medium rod loaded with, uh, well, with a four-out reel, spooled with 50-pound test mono, and a seven-strand wire leader to tie on a, a five-out or either an eight-out VMC circle hook. Some of the great baits for sharks are cut mullet, bluefish, ladyfish, and best of all, a fresh uh, cut strip of a bonita. Now, don't forget... The fly fishermen can sight cast uh, to the sharks, and the sharks do love flies. Typical sharks can run anywhere from 30 to 50 pounds, and some can weigh over several hundred pounds. Now, also, staying offshore, another great weekend of our genuine red snapper. Great reports have been coming and caught from the mini season last Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Most of the red snapper were caught over the artificial reefs and wrecks in 100 to 130 foot of water. And I spoke with Captain Todd Harris of the Huntress. Now, they limited out on red snapper each day of the mini season and only 45 minutes. Captain Todd said that the red snapper were caught on live cigar minters in 120 foot of water over a Swiss cheese bottom with most of the snappers average the last two weekends 8 to 15 pounds. Now, I've got a great photo of Chad Ingram with a beautiful red snapper caught with Captain Todd aboard the Huntress. All right, let's All go right, in Rick, shore. Absolutely, moving in shore. We want to talk about the consistency of the flounder fishing. The flounder have been just about everywhere, up in the creeks, 
in the intracoastal, around the oyster beds, along the dock pilings and bridge pilings, and anywhere from 4 to 12 feet of water. Now, get that flounder bite. You want to bump the bottom, you know, with a hookup jig, either a quarter ounce or a three-eighths ounce tip with a live mullet or maybe uh, a, a mud minnow. Now, you want to try to cover as much bottom as you can. The typical flounders are running one to three pounds. Also inshore, we're in the dog days of summer right now. It has been raining and it's been hot. And a lot of things that I'm learning is that all of those thunderstorms that have been occurring from literally Melbourne, the Orlando area, all the way up through Jacksonville, we're getting a lot of that dirty discharge that's coming out of the St. John's River. And that's really making our waters from the St. John's north dirty. But the guys down south in the St. Augustine and Matanzas and Flagler areas are doing real well. That's like Captain Tommy Derringer. Now, he's still catching redfish every morning. He's using his rappler skittle walk, top water plugs at first light. And then as the sun gets up and it gets hot, he'll switch to a quarter cut of a blue crab to get to bite. Typical redfish are running three to seven pounds. Now, he's got a great photo of his good friend, Ted Nurit, with a nice redfish that he caught with Captain Tommy Derringer. And also, Rick, I just want to remind everybody, the CCA Jacksonville is having their first annual Jacksonville Fishing Tournament Saturday, August 2nd. Go online and check it out. Hey, Russell, I have a question for you from the CCA Northeast region. Hey, I want to ask you, why do you think the skitter walk, topwater walk the dog lure works so well in your region? Rick, because of the sound chamber that it has. The sound travels underwater and attracts and stimulates the strike. It's your reaction strike, and when you get that reaction strike, it's one of the most exciting things that you can ever witness, but that's a search lure that is very, very good and practical. So let me tell you, sometimes, Russell, I actually remember a lot of times throwing topwater plugs with my customers, but they'll set the hook you know, a little bit too quick. How do you tell your customers to work that topwater lure when it comes to the bite? When it comes to the bite, Rick, it's very important that you do nothing until you feel the tension. If you're watching the strike, then you're going to possibly jerk it away. You always wait till you have the tension, then you can set the hook. All right, great, great report this week, Russell. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Northeast Region hotspots from the Northeast Region inshore. Catch flounder around the dock pylons or oyster beds in 4 to 12 feet of water using tip jigs with a live mud minna. And then offshore, this is the last weekend for the Red Snapper mini season. Fish the wrecks in 100 to 130 feet of water and use live bait. Good job, Rick. Shark. Shark. Oh, that was a good one. Okay, she don't go. Gets me. I do. Don't go away because when we return, we're telling you what exciting species to expect for next week only on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. Good job, Rick. You did it. Wandering out into this great unknown. And when it's done, believe that I will yell it from that mountain high. Find summer, the Chevy Summer Drive. Get 0% financing for 72 months plus a total value of $4,000 on this 2014 Silverado All-Star Edition and no monthly payments until the end of summer. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha Forward Thinking. The all-new F200 inline four-stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel-efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all-new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. It's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at the office. But down here in the Florida Keys, we have to disagree. Because with over 200 of the world's best charter boat captains and guides, there's no such thing as a bad day of fishing. The Florida Keys and Key West.
Thanks for tuning in to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with all of our captains, contests, and appearances. You don't ever have to miss a show. You can find full episodes of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report right on your YouTube channel. And don't forget to check out our website for fishing reports in your region. Visit www.chevyfloridainsiderfishingreport.com where you'll find everything you need to know. Stay connected. Next week on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, we are talking permit. Make sure to tune in to Sun Sports every Thursday. Plus, you can catch repeats of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report on Fridays and Saturdays. Check your local listings for times. Hey, guys. Now, Bree, yes. you got all these things. We, we do. Let's do this. We go high five. No, but then we have... We have jellyfish. Jellyfish. High five. High five. Scuba dive. Scuba dive. High five. Shark. Shark. Now and then I have a new one. High five. No, you can't touch high my five. face too. You Octopus. Mess up everything. I'm so glad I'm not in that anymore. <laughs> he's, got, he's got somebody new to pick on. Yeah, Your man. Hands are sweaty. Dave, Gross. They're not sweaty. My hands are just my hands. They're, they're not sweaty. They're, they're not sweaty. They're just so, disgusting. So, so what are you going to do this weekend? Quick. This weekend? Yeah. Well, I'm excited for freaking Shark Week, man. Man. Yay. I'm in the doghouse. Bye. That's all Thanks I'm going to be doing watching. is watching Shark Week. Bye, everybody. Bye.